Today, we are going to be talking about bevels and plasma cutters. If you want to know how to reduce severe bevels, you have come to the right place. I will cover what causes bevels and what control we actually have over them. I will then describe, install, and calibrate a torch holder that will allow you to perfectly align your plasma jet with ease. I constantly read in many online forums covering plasma jet problems about excess bevels. Hypertherm states the following. A cut with zero degree bevel is a straight cut, perpendicular to the plane of the material. Most plasma torches uses a clockwise swirling floor of plasma gas, which produces a straight cut on the right hand side of the curve with respect to forward torch motion. Typical bevel angles for conventional plasma torches range from one to three degrees on the good side of the cut and three to eight degrees on the bad side of the cut. High tolerance plasma cutting systems can achieve even lower bevel angles. Although some bevel is inherent in the plasma process due to the shape of the gas jet as it exits the torch nozzle, it is possible to minimize it. Bevel angles greater than five degrees may indicate a problem with pack machine parameters. I have included a link in the description below to Hypertherm's webpage which fully addresses this issue. Based on all that, we know that there is always an inherent bevel anytime you use a plasma cutter. That is because the plasma stream is shaped like a cone. Further, depending on which side of the plasma stream you cut on, it can further increase the size of the bevel. I use Fusion 360 to generate my G-code on a Langmuir CNC. It allows me to determine which side of the cut line to use. It is the sideways compensation selection in the 2D profile section of manufacturing that allows you to make this selection. Unfortunately, this selection is applied to all cut lines. That forces me to decide which cuts will get the most precision, either the inside or the outside cuts. You cannot do both. These bevel problems I just covered cannot be overcome. They're inherent in the basic design. However, we often see bevels produced well outside of these limits. These rare, really bad levels, bevels, often are a result from the improperly aligned plasma jet, i.e. the plasma jet is not perpendicular to the cutting surface, even though the barrel of your plasma jet may be. Everyone assumes that if the outside barrel of the torch is aligned perpendicular, that the plasma jet will also be aligned. That is rarely the case. One must align the plasma jet, not the barrel. The following pic shows an exaggerated plasma vector and barrel out of alignment. So how do we align the plasma jet? In order to properly align the plasma jet, the torch must have two degrees of alignment freedom. The barrel must be able to rotate about the Z axis, which is the vertical axis. The barrel must also be able to rotate about the Y axis in the Z X plane. I'm just use a pencil to kind of demonstrate what's going on. So it's got to be able to rotate like this around the Z axis, which is straight up. And it's also got to be able to rotate like this around the Y axis. So that's essentially all that, what I was trying to say. Unfortunately, the Langmuir torch holders do not allow rotation around the y-axis, so we have to modify their torch holder to allow this type of rotation. This can be accomplished with the use of a new mount plate and spacer block. 
This is a picture of the two components. I have made the NC files required to cut these parts available in the description below. The small square tube on the mounting plate is optional but makes calibration much easier as you will see later. This new mounting approach makes use of all the existing Landmere mount parts. After cutting the plate and spacer, make sure you drill or ream the specified holes to the tolerance as shown. So let's assemble the new mount. Okay, we're out in the garage now, and we're going to mount this thing up. Now, <clears throat> I've already mounted the primary plate to the Langmuir torch holders using the same hardware that comes with the Langmuir system. And uh, the two screws that go here and over here are also the same screws that come with the Langmuir. So <clears throat> what we're going to do now is just take the spacer plate, put it there, and we're going to just screw it into this existing mounting hole. and just not even snug it up, just make it pretty loose. Then we're going to take again the existing uh, mounting hardware with a washer and put it in the other side. We're just going to make this not real tight, but not too loose. And then we're going to put <clears throat> electronic leveler on it and bring it up to zero. In this case, I'm going to bring it to 2.1, which is what mine really takes for an alignment. And I'm just going to snug it right up and tighten it right up. Now, <clears throat> you'd set, on, on yours, initially set this to zero. And then <clears throat> we would make a cut. And then based upon the angles that we measure on the round slug that we do, we're going to rotate this and then rotate this to center it. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. And I'm going to reinstall my splash and spark guard, which we'll talk about in another video. But anyway, that's how you install it. Okay, we are now ready to cut a round specimen of either one quarter inch or three eighths inch thickness. The thicker the better. I would recommend a diameter of two inches. Make sure you mark the specimen with a vector along the y-axis as depicted with the green arrow before the cut. This is critical. After cutting the specimen, locate the two points P1 and P2 opposite each other that have the smallest bevels and mark those spots. Measure the angle between horizontal and the line between point 0.1 and point 0.2. Rotate the barrel along the z-axis by this angle. The points A1 and A2 with the largest bevels will be 90 degrees from points P1 and P2. Mark them. The diameter that passes through points A1 and A2 with the largest bevels is the x-axis of the plasma jet. We must now determine which direction the plasma vector is pointing along this axis. Okay, using an electronic compass, measure bevels A1 and A2. They look like this.
perform the following math. If A2 equals A1, then you are aligned. If A2 not equal to A1, then perform the following calculation. So you rotate the holder around the y-axis or the z-x plane by this angle you've just calculated. Now cut a new alignment coupon to verify your adjustments. Measure and make additional adjustments as necessary. You now have an aligned plasma jet, which will render cuts with symmetric bevels. However, bevels will degrade as consumables age. This mount and process resulted in a consistent three degree bevel completely around the circle on my Razor Wild 45 system. So what can those of you who use a hand torch do? You will use the same plate and spacer, but will also use the Langmill vertical mount. Drill a hole 4.078 inches above the bottom hole or match drill to the mount. Mount the Langmill vertical plate to the new mount plate using two new fasteners that you will have to provide. Everything else remains. Thanks for watching.